I can raise my hands before you, oh God. Thank you that I can lift my heart and voice up to you, oh God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, tell them, say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Greater Page Temple, Church of God in Christ, located in the greater Los Angeles area, where our pastor is none other than Dr. David E. Harris. Hallelujah. We've come to lift him up this morning. We've come to magnify him this morning. We've come to give him our best praise. Hallelujah. On this morning. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. Come on, we're going to make a joyful noise before him this morning. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. 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 I lift my hands, I praise you, Lord. Lord, we invite your presence in. Honor us today with your presence. We stand to invoke your presence. Lord, we need you now. We need you to inhabit your praises. We need you to receive the clapping of our hands and the lifting of our voices. Let your glory be in the room. Let your glory be in the room. We cannot worship without you. God, we need you right now. Send the rain on us. Rain down your spirit on us. Send the rain on us, Lord. Let every soul feel the spirit of God in the room. Receive our praise on today. Receive our worship. Let your name be glorified. We we'll shout glory to your name. Hallelujah to your name. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. Our God is worthy. He's worthy. Let your name be.
be glorified. And we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. This scripture today is coming from First Psalms. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his light is in the law of the Lord, and his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the, in the, in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord have a blessing to read and hear it of everyone that hears his holy word. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I will be reading the affirmation of faith. Our belief concerning the Bible we believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible written word of God. Our belief concerning God. We believe that there is one God eternally existence into three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Our belief concerning the church. We believe in the blessed hope which is the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. Our belief concerning sin. We believe the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Our belief concerning salvation. We believe, in, we believe that the regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. Our belief concerning Christ. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in answer to believing in prayer. Our belief concerning the Holy Ghost. We believe that the baptism in the Holy Ghost according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for him. Hallelujah. Our belief concerning sanctification, we believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost, by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The scripture said, clap your hands, O ye people. Amen. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Can I hear you shout this morning? Hallelujah. Glory, because we triumph. Hallelujah. And he's triumph. And we have the victory, amen, in Jesus on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Bible said that the trees clap their hands before him. Hallelujah. Clap their hands before him. If I don't praise him, the rock will cry out. Hallelujah. I don't want a rock to cry out in my place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord.
loving me hallelujah thank you lord you've won the victory at the cross hallelujah our anthem is that you won the victory at the cross hallelujah hallelujah you've won the victory and you did it all for me you did it for my children hallelujah my grandchildren hallelujah oh god my friends hallelujah you did it for every soul in the world whether they choose you or not you still made it available oh god hallelujah we thank you hallelujah for winning the victory oh god thank you lord Thank you for learning obedience, hallelujah, to the things that you suffered, hallelujah. Thank you for not saying a mumbling word on the cross, oh God. Thank you, oh God, that you did not come down. You could have called 10,000 angels, oh God, but you shed your blood for me, and we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. 
Death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. She did in majesty. We worship you, oh God, almighty God. Hallelujah. There's none like you. None like you. Hallelujah. Come on, tell them. Say, there's none like you. There's no one like you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. what he wants to hear right there. Hallelujah. He wants to feel your praise. Praise is a passionate thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We have intimacy with him.
That is what I long to do. that helps me to do the right thing. Hallelujah. And I worship you for that, oh God. Oh, I worship you almighty God. There is none like you. Can you help us sing it to him? Oh, I worship you almighty Oh, that is none, there is none like you. Oh, Lord, I worship you. Oh, you're my friend of peace in every situation. I can find peace, oh God, because of you. That is what I And I love to worship you. I pass after you. Oh, I give you praise. But I 
just want you to look at your neighbor. You don't have to touch him. I know you still, we are under mask still. Y'all should be wearing your mask, but look at him and just testify and just say, ain't nobody greater than our God. Come on, look at somebody and just look, reach over at, at the next row. Look at somebody and say, nobody is greater than our God. Come on, be a witness. How many know that this is the truth? That, that is the truth that there's nobody greater than our God. There's nobody that can heal you. There's nobody that can deliver you like our God. There's nobody that can open up doors, shut doors, make ways out of no way. I look uh, not in a woman, not in a man, not in money, not in anything, in houses, cars, hallelujah. There is nobody greater. I don't care what anybody says. If God is for you, if God is working it out, if God says it, there's nobody greater than him. about the goodness of Jesus 
and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out hallelujah. 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 We don't have a right to have an attitude. We don't have a right to have some disposition. We don't have a right. Hallelujah. But he says to enter into his gates with what? And enter into his courts with what? You ought to be praising him. I don't care what you feel like, how you feel. Hallelujah. We ought to enter in. Hallelujah. Giving him glory. Because it's just another day. I said, it's just another day. I said, it's just another day that the Lord has kept us. Just another day. Just another day. Just another day. Did anybody feel like praising him in here? Well, why don't you praise him then? Come on, praise him. Come on, clap your hands.
at your neighbor and say, everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Come on, I don't care what everything you've been going through. Look at somebody and say, it's going to be all right. I don't care for the trial, the situation, the, the headache, the problem. God told me to tell you it's going to be all right. <laughs> whatever, 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 whatever. I wish I had about 10 good praises in here. Whatever you need, whatever you want, God's got it. Whatever you need, God's got it. He'll supply it. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands everywhere. Those that are joining us on the airways, lift your hands in the sanctuary. Come on and just begin to love on Jesus. Come on, just begin to love on him. Begin to give him glory. Come on. He is our God. Come on, um, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. The devil gets mad when you start to speak in tongues because he can't understand. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, 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 Lord. 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 Our soul say yes today. Our soul say yes, Lord. Our soul say yes, Lord. Our soul say yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Our soul say yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our soul say yes to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. shut in, those that cannot help themselves, come on, let's just sing that. As we approach the throne of grace, Father, here we are, 
standing before so great a crowd of witnesses. Those of you that have a loved one, those of you that are dealing with a sickness, those of you that are dealing with loved ones that are incarcerated, I want you to just say their name right now. Come on, come on, say their name right now. Obey the prophet. Just say their name right now. You know the situation. Father, you heard their name. We pray in the name of Jesus, the infallible name, that you will lift them up, God. Heal, deliver, set free by your power and your anointing. We believe God, we trust God, and we thank you for the power and the manifestation. God, if you said, you said we could speak a thing, and it shall. You said to call for the elders of the church and to pray the prayer of faith. Cancer, you got to go. Diabetes, you have to go. Arthritis, you have to go. Headaches, you have to go. Every manner of disease and illness, you've got to go. And we give you glory. God, I thank you, God, that you're mending broken hearts and you're mending families back together and you're making ways out of no way. We give you all praise and we give you all glory in Jesus' name. And if you believe that prayer, would you just clap your hands and give God glory? Hallelujah. 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 You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I am so happy and elated to see each and every one of your faces in the house of the Lord on this third Sunday, hallelujah, of June. Do you know, do you know that this year is flying by? And Jesus said, unless I shorten the days, no flesh would be saved, or God rather. Unless I shorten the days, because man has become wiser and wickeder. Amen. Everybody that's saying, Lord, Lord, is not going to enter in. But you must put yourself check. Amen. The Bible in Corinthians tells us, so let a man examine himself. Amen. And I praise God that I find my house, amen, serving the Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our announcements. Let's say amen. Evangelist God. We thank the Lord for another day. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Our announcements for today. First, just a reminder. Let's wear our mask. Make sure it's up over your nose. We want to continue to be safe. Midweek services, Sunday mornings at 9:30 is Sunday school for all age. I'm sorry, for all ages. Yes, and 11 a.m. is our regular morning worship. Also, at 11 a.m., you will find the children's church in session for ages three to 12. That is the second through the fourth Sunday of every month. And we praise God for our qualified teachers there. Amen. Tuesday, 6 p.m. Zoom Bible study for youth and young adults. Youth and young adults are getting together, teaming up, powerful. Tuesday, 7 p.m. Conference line, adult Bible study, and on Facebook. Conference line number is 425-436-6303 with the access code of 532-513. Wednesday, prayer, 7 p.m. on the conference line. Amen? Amen. It's power in prayer. Thursday, 11 a.m. to 1230 is our outreach ministry. That's when we're giving out food 
and staples to the needy, for the community. And if you want to make ends meet, praise the Lord, come on out, 11 to 1230, serving many, many families, over 100 families each month. So come on out, help us out. Amen, or send your neighbor. Friday, 7 p.m. on the conference line, revival time, prayer and words of inspiration. Amen. So if you didn't get that number, feel free to call the church for anything you need that you missed, which is 323-870-5270. Saturday, that's July 2nd, Evangelism SWAT team will be getting together, 8.30, and be going out into the neighborhood to share Jesus. That's an awesome ministry. Come on out and join us. Also, next, uh, continuing upcoming events, our first baptism for the month, for the year of 2022. Okay. Our first baptism for the year of 2022 will be the fourth Sunday in July at 4 p.m. If you want to uh, be baptized, you want to be rebaptized, please contact the office and register. Registration has begun. Amen? That's at the 323-870-5270, extension 7, or just press 0. We will be celebrating our 79th church anniversary. The colors will be green and gold our flyer is on facebook so see it there that's 79th church anniversary friday july 15th at 7 p.m and sunday july 17th 11 a.m and again a 4 p.m service our bishop bob jackson will be there he will be a main speaker and we're excited about having him here. We'll be here. I'm sorry. Yes. On a Sunday, which is the um, 17th, we will have Bishop Marcus Collins from the Montana jurisdiction. Hallelujah. So don't miss, we have great things coming up, great things. The theme is Reclaiming the Standards and Principles of Holiness. That's Isaiah 35 and 8. We're asking all members to represent with a gift to the ministry of $1 per year. So that's the 79th anniversary you added up. Hallelujah. And we're just excited about the 79th year and what is in store for the next year. So let's just come on and celebrate this 79th year with all we have. All right? God bless you. In my voice, in my inner voice, just the Lord keeps singing. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you.
guests and why I'm have to bring it. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be worshiping on today. God has given us life. He's given us strength. Amen. He's given us health. Oh, come on. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Well, I want to praise God because we have our guests. We have, if you're a visitor to this church for the first, second, or third time, would you stand? Come on. Let's give them a great praise. We are so happy to have you here at the Greater Page Temple Church. Amen. Feel at home, worship God. Amen. And let God have his way. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to acknowledge, amen, my Aunt Dr. Zenobia Burrell, Reverend Burrell. Amen. She's here. She came today, made me smile. Unexpected. Amen. Unexpected. Amen. And two, amen. Our special guest, Dr. Tyson, Pastor Moses Tyson, amen. There'll be more forthcoming, amen, to our supervisor, amen, Mother Harris, and to Pastor Harris, Pastor Burrell, amen, to, amen, our elders, Elder Perry, amen, and our uh, associate pastor, Pastor Pearson, God bless you. To all of the evangelists, amen, amen. I see y'all, I see y'all in y'all area. Made me smile. And everybody in their prospective places to God's children. Well, I am totally fabricated. God, look what God has done. We are approaching our 79th church anniversary. I, I, y'all, you got to get a little bit more excited for me. We're excited about our 79th. And ain't nobody mad but the devil. Listen. <laughs> our jurisdictional, our jurisdictional bishop is coming. I said our jurisdictional bishop is coming. I said our jurisdictional bishop, our new jurisdictional bishop is coming. On July the 15th. Amen. Bishop Bob Jackson. We are in the West Coast jurisdiction, ecclesiastical jurisdiction, and he is coming to bless us. You're, I just know that you're going to just be elated and your socks knocked off by his ministry, so down to earth and loving, amen, and a soul winner, amen. He started his church with 13 people. Now it is somewhere between seven and 10,000 people, amen because of soul winning, and that's what we are about. We are about winning souls for the Lord, and I respect a leader that can do that, amen, and show me the way, amen. And then, amen, on Sunday, amen, we're looking just to have a high time, amen, that great bishop from uh, Montana jurisdiction, he is a preaching machine. Y'all, my Lord. I said I'm not going to hold any stops anymore. I'm going to bring the very best in. The Bishop Marcus Collins, amen. Hold on to your seat because, amen, he's going to preach your socks off. Amen. He is a preacher's preacher. Amen. And he is going to bless us immensely. I want you to tell the world. I want you to tell the world. Amen. That greater page is on the move for God. Amen. Amen. Well, at this time, we're going to uh, we're going to receive, amen, the sacrifice of tithing and offering. Amen. We're going to receive. I want our ushers to get in place. Amen. We're going to receive, amen, a uh, sacrifice. Not only the sacrifice, but your tithing. Amen. Is that all right? Is that our, we want to get in position to be a blessing. For those of you that are joining us by, by um, airwaves, by Facebook Live and YouTube Live, amen. I want you to go to Givelify. Givelify is the way. 
Amen. Amen. I want you to do that. And if you want to mail it, you can mail it to 2610 South LaSalle in the city of Los Angeles, 918. Is anybody excited about giving? Amen. I'm getting ready to pray. I don't have to sell you. Listen, listen. Shh. I don't have to sell you the gospel. I don't have to sell you what is right. Do you hear me? I don't have to sell you what is right. It's right to pay our tithes. It's right to give a liberal offering. Amen. And if you're giving by credit or debit, amen, would you uh, see Evangelist Guy? She's right here. Raise your hand. And we want to be a blessing, amen, to the household of faith. We are doing great things in this house. Amen. God has given us a new lease on life. Amen. I said he's given us a new lease on life. Amen. I'm getting ready to pray. Father, we give you glory, we give you praise. We thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. God, we pray, Lord, that you will multiply the seed, cause it to grow and germinate. God, thank you for the tither. Thank you for those that trust you and are obedient to the word of God. Return it a hundredfold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you will go to the nearest aisle and just drop it in the receptacle, please. Say bless. to me that have been placed on the anniversary committee. If our missionary and that guy uh, let you know that your name is on that committee, I'd like to meet with you sometime after church, immediately after church. 
and she'll tell you who you are so that our anniversary can be a great success. Amen. And speaking of that, while we're doing that, amen, someone may want to give already today for the church anniversary. The Lord is laying on your heart. Just fill out an envelope and mark it, amen, that I'm giving for the church anniversary. We're asking all members, again, for this church anniversary to give a love gift of $79 on Sunday afternoon. Amen. Not a lot of money. I know inflation is high. I know that what we're, what we're going through. Amen. But I just believe, I just believe if I can spend $20, amen, in a drive-thru, amen, that I can give God $79. Amen. And that's, that's just for a hamburger, a fry, and a drink. And I know I'm telling the truth. Amen. So we want to be a blessing. Has everyone given? Amen. Don't stop your blessing. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. Can you put your hands together? Amen. I praise God for you. I praise God. Amen. We are a growing church. We are a church with vision. We are a church with destination. We had a lot of delay. But how many know that God has a destination for us? I said God has a destination and a purpose for each and every one of our lives and for this ministry. I just want to say thank you to everyone that is standing by your pastor's side. Amen. That is standing by your pastor's side. As God leads me, amen, and so you follow. I want to praise God, and I, I haven't said this, I want to praise God for my aunt, Dr. Z, amen, amen. You know, sometimes you, you have to, you have individuals that stand with you behind the scenes, and I praise God for she is one of them, amen. When things were rough in the beginning of this ministry, amen, she stood with your pastor, and I publicly want to thank you, amen, amen, God bless you, amen, amen, she is a witness to where this church has come from, amen, the Lord has brought us a mighty long way. Well, tonight, today I stand before you to present Amen. Our special guest, our speaker, the man of God. He's just going to go however God leads him. Amen. He is world renowned. He has traveled. I need you all to hear this and y'all sit down and relax and hear. Amen. What prophetic word is going to come. Amen. Through music and through the word. He has traveled the length and breadth of this world. He has been on every continent there is to be on. He has produced the Hawkins. He has produced uh, Bishop G.E. Patterson. He has produced uh, the International Church uh, of God in Christ. Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down so they can hear. He has produced the Clark Sisters. He has produced Who's Who. Amen. And not only that, amen, he leads a dynamic congregation. Amen. Jerusalem, Church of God in Christ. 
in the San Francisco area, one of another historical church. Amen. It is historic. It is downtown, downtown San Francisco. And it is the most beautiful building that you would ever want to see with a thriving congregation. And he thought it not robbery to come and be with us on today. Amen. And, and, and his works speak for him. I, I, I will say nothing more, but I will give you into the capable hands of this great man of God, Pastor Dr. Moses Tyson. Shall we all stand and receive him? like I'm running for office. <laughs> Brother Great and Grace's introduction by your great pastor. Uh, say amen for your pastor. Amen. Good pastor Harris is a fine young man. And I give honor to God and I thank him for the gift of salvation. I thank him for filling me with the Holy Ghost. And how many of y'all got the Holy Ghost in here? I give honor to, I call him Dad Harris, so I make the distinction, and to Brother Harris, and to the Burrells, and to all the elders, pastors, saints, and friends, and these great musicians, <laughs> and to whom all honor is due. He, he said a sermon. I really didn't come to preach a sermon. I came to just testify, and uh, I didn't bring no sermon. Sometimes the sermon can constrain you. Y'all understand, right? I didn't bring no written out script, none of that. I just uh, come to testify and, uh, and encourage my brother and uh, encourage you. Uh, I've been to death doors and back. Uh, my brother Bernard Tyson uh, died in his sleep. Um, he was the chairman of Kaiser. And I rode by, the, they built the hospital uh, school and named it in his honor. And Pastor Dean and the pastor then took me by there. That was the first time I'd been by there. And it was really, uh, uh, it was really surreal and a great accomplishment for a black man to rise to the level of chairman of a multi billion dollar corporation. Not millions, billions. And that was a great accomplishment. And yet he didn't forget God. At his funeral, he was on tape saying he know he's saved because he gets on his knees every day and asks God to forgive him for any sin he may have committed. I saw that at the funeral. And I want to admonish you, you better make sure you saved because you don't never know when death is coming. But be for sure it's coming. And, and, and let me tell you, a year to the day that Bernard died, I couldn't breathe, and I thought maybe I had COVID. I called, ambulance, they came and got me. Three days later or so, I woke up. They put me on life support. When I came to, Dr. Kane was standing over my bed to tell me that he needed to go into my heart, mother, and do some repair work. <laughs> When I was growing up and I played in the audiences, they say he's a heart fixer. <laughs> and a mind regulator. Well, I know him to be a heart fixer. And a mind regulator. And can I tell you something? I'm still here. <laughs> My brother lived in big old nice mansion behind the gates, the mine gates. But can I tell you about death angels? Death angels, when you go to my brother's house and he was alive, you had to announce your name and then they had to call his house to see if he can get in. But when the death angel comes, the death angel don't have to make no announcement. He went through them big iron gates and got my brother, Chairman of Kaiser. 
when the angel came for me, I could have stayed on my journey. Can I tell y'all something? It ain't nothing like experiencing death. Because you get to find out, Mother, it's so much more beyond this planet. But it wasn't my time to go. That's why I refuse to play games in church. I'm not trying to curry favor with nobody. I'm trying to curry favor with God. Because in the end, it's only what you do for Christ. It's going to last. Let, let, me, let me say a few words. So, uh, I'm not going to preach a sermon, but if I was going to preach a sermon, I mean, so many things I can think about right now. Elisha tells the lady, Shunammite, you're going to have a child. She's been so faithful. And then this little boy gets out in the field with the father, and he gets a headache, and he dies. And the Bible says that he grabbed his head and said, my head, my head. Can I tell y'all something? There's some people in the church that got something wrong with their head. But I'm not going to preach that today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I could talk about, uh, oh, well, I could talk about God uses who he chooses. I did an interview with a man that's called the custom pastor, and he cussed too much. And so some people told me, say, Pastor, why would you do an interview with a man that cussed like that? I said, well, sometimes you'd be surprised how God used people that you would never use. Well, there is, uh, <laughs> there's Rahab. Joshua sends the spies to seek, seek out the land, and they go, and they stay at the harlot's business. And the Bible don't say he, they rebuke him either. In fact, they hid him on the, on the rooftop. When they came to look for him, it was the harlot, Rahab, who protected them. Because the Bible says that she sensed that God was with them. And that they was going to get that land. Can I tell you something? Sometimes the people you think sense what God is going to do, because you think they are somebody that they may not be in him, they don't sense what God is going to do with you. So God will take you some places where they can sense what God is going to do with you. And the Bible says that she cuts a deal with them. Let me tell y'all something. Anytime we do stuff, well, we, we always doing, 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 and you can never do, 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 do back, that's not a fair relationship. So the Bible says, she said, now, I'm going to protect you and show you how to get out of here. But when you come back, I want you to save my family. And they say, if you ever in the room, when we come back and let the, the silk down, we'll spare them. And the Bible says, <laughs> that when they came back to take the land, they spared Rahab. Now let me tell you why you can't be uppity and know who God is using. See, I, 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 see, I get in trouble because I have a problem because I found out that the Emancipation Proclamation was signed way before I was born in the 1800s. And it said that we are free. Master, we are free. So you're not going to oppress my mind. <laughs> you, you're not going to oppress my mind and stagnate my growth. <laughs> so the Bible says, Rahab, the harlot, ends up being in the lineage of Jesus because she married one of the Israelis. Here come over that Jesse, which brings Jesus to the lineage. So you don't know who God is going to use. Can I get any help in here? Well, I can't preach that. I didn't bring that sermon today. Well, well, there's other sermons I could bring. But can I just invite you, when you go home, to read the sixth chapter of Mark. And I think that's appropriate for what I feel I want to encourage my little new brother with. 
Somebody say new brother. See, sometimes God will put people in your life that will stand with you to encourage you. So don't be afraid to go down the road. He told you to go down. See, Luke 5, you, you got to understand who called you to be a disciple. We're all disciples. And sometimes we get it mixed up. I have to tell the people at my church there, don't get confused. I'm the pastor. I'm not the king. You got a voice too. Where we get that from? We got to lose our masculinity and lose our courage in order to be in church. No. God called me to be the head servant, not the head boss. If anybody go home with their hurt feelings, mother, it should be me. If somebody was going to get their feelings hurt today, I'd rather for it to be me than any of you. Because I'm in the business to get my feelings hurt. See, we twist this thing around and don't get it. We're the servants. We're the servants. And we get it turned around. It's, it's not my church. It's God's church. It's God's church. And see, it's one thing when you pick him. But it's something else when he picks you. See, when you pick him, you might get mad if they don't let you lead the song in the choir. You might get mad if they don't put you over the purity band. You'll get mad if you're not over the Sunday school superintendent. You'll go home and gossip against your leader. You'll go and be two-faced and then stand up and testify. You'll steal the tithe that belong to God and let a guest evangelist put you in line to plant a seed. But when he picked you, you'll say no when everybody else say yes because you won't be afraid to be a chicken and try to curry favor with a bunch of cowards because I'm not a patient in the hospital. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I got my war clothes on. Anybody got your war clothes on? Didn't it say put on the whole armor? Because he knew that somebody was going to shoot some daggers at you. Well, well, let me, let me, let me, let me say this and I want to play a song. Mark 6. And I want you to remember this. Mark 6. The disciples. <laughs> see, they had seen the power of him. Peter, Peter and them had saw his power because he got in Peter's boat. And when Peter had stopped fishing and gave up. Jesus got in. And sometimes, mother, things don't happen for us until we give up. We got to get off the phone with our prayer partners. I've never seen people pray so much in all my life and never get the breakthrough. If you got your foot on my neck, I'm not going through no prayer consecration for 10 days when I can tell you, get your foot off my neck. I have to tell my mother, they put on so many different fasts. We had a fast not too long ago, 40 days, pray the virus away. I wrote a letter, what kind of foolishness is this? We got therapeutic. And at the end of the 40 days, nobody talked about it because the person that was in charge, he even got the virus. I don't think y'all heard me. Paul Saints just fasting. I told my mother, I said, Mom, you going to take your medicine. You 89 years old. She took her medicine. That's what she did, Mom. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is we have a responsibility in ministry, y'all, not to play with the saints. My father taught me, whatever you do, boy, don't play with the saints. That's why I don't raise offerings. If you won't do what your pastor say, 
you shouldn't do what a guest evangelist say. If you invite me to your house to eat dinner, I'm not going to your kitchen and pull out your stuff. Whatever you prepare for me, that's what I'm going to eat unless I'm allergic to something. It's not for me to come in here and raid your church. And shepherds are going to really have to answer to God to let people come in and rape the flock. If I'm paying my tithes and offering, what else do I need? We have took ministry and really, well, see, this new generation, they're not going to put up with us. I had somebody ask me, what's a state supervisor? I'm not knocking, I understand title and authority. I'm not saying that. But you can't go overboard with it. I'm supposed to, if I'm over something, I should be the head encourager. The church should be the safe zone. When you say the church, you should get excited. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, because you know why? It was a safe zone. I came running when they said unto me. People ain't running now. Because we got so much junk. And now we on social media. Some of y'all see me on social media. I'm not afraid to speak my mind when I know I'm speaking the Bible. Oh, I respect title and position, but I don't respect abuse. Not when you're doing it to the saints. Now, I don't care what you do to me. But when you got your foot on innocent people next, I'm not scared to tell you, you need to go somewhere and sit down. So now God's going to raise up a whole new group. I'm 61. I got much experience, not just in Kojic, in different organizations. Because my music opened the doors to me. And God has shown me, Mom, he only gives us these gifts to get a platform to get people attention. And I refuse for my last few days when I have your attention to line you up and beg you for $20. I ain't going to do that. I'm going to encourage you to get to know God like never before. Because eternal life is forever. And we don't know when it's going to be our last time. Now, let me say this, and I'm going to play my song. March 6th, the disciples had just witnessed Jesus after the death of, of John the Baptist. Herod had John the Baptist, his head cut off. And when you do real ministry, can I tell y'all something? It's going to come a time, if you obey God, somebody is going to want to cut your head off. Somebody is going to want to cut your head off. It ain't all celebrity, celebrity. You got to be willing to take the hit. I'll die before I take back what I say. Because I tasted death. I got a friend, I had to tell him, you got to stop lying. Big position. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Because they taught me it was about your soul. It wasn't about friendship. How many dead chickens can we eat at these banquets? How many more conventions are we going to have when we come home with a bunch of receipts? In the Bible, them men of God had power. Elijah and them stepped on the water. They didn't undermine each other for position. God told Elijah, put your cloak around Elisha because that's who I picked to succeed you. But you never read where Elijah told Elisha that. Elijah just was faithful. And then when God gets ready to take Elijah, he, 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 a special spirit comes. 
And then the people start whispering in his ear. Don't you know something's going to happen to your master today? Elijah didn't want to hear that. See, don't let people whisper in your ear. Let God develop you. Because when he develops you, can't nobody move you but God. And the Bible says when they get ready to go, mother, it say they walk to the water. And they had so much power till the water backs up. Boy, that's the way. That's, see, that's the, that's the God I serve. The water backs up. And only Elijah and Elisha walked across. Let me tell you all something, church. Don't get mad when you can't get in the cockpit with the pilot. Everybody's important to make the plane fly. Plane can't fly if they don't clean the toilet. So you need the toilet cleaner. They got somebody to blow the horn to keep the birds away. Because it's a team effort. So the Bible says when you get across, then he says, uh, what do you want? He didn't ask for no title or position. He asked for a double portion of his spirit. Because he knew that them demons that Elijah tackled was going to be even worse. He said, well, you asked a hard thing, but if you see me going up, then you got it. And here's one of the first recorded tornadoes in the Bible. I was trying to figure out how do a house get blown on this side and nothing next to it. Well, the tornado didn't have no orders to pick up Elisha. It had orders to pick up Elijah. And they knew that Elisha loved Elijah enough until he would try to pull him down so he wouldn't go up. So here come the chariots of fire. Gets between them so he couldn't touch them. And the Bible says that Elijah was taken up. Here comes the cloak down to Elisha. And Elisha never says, I'm a prophet. Never says, I am a big apostle. The Bible says all he did was walk to the water. And he had so much power until the water split open so he could walk on. And the people said that the spirit of Elijah now rests on Elisha. Can I tell you something? If you know you got the power, you don't have to worry about the title. And then people were so nutty and so unspiritual. They said, he must be somewhere. Let's go look for him. So Elisha don't argue because he don't want to look like he's anxious. He said, well, y'all go look. They go look a couple days. They said, we can't find him. <laughs> oh, man. And then there's Moses. He didn't ask to be used. He didn't ask to be used. God called Moses. He said, oh, man, I can't go back there. I killed a man. He said, oh, no, you're going to go back. See, because sometimes what happens is, see, you can't leave things. You have to challenge things to change. He said, oh, no, I'm going to use you because you know who them people are. See, if you know my history, you'll understand why I'm not afraid to speak up. And I'm not speaking power, truth to power. I'm speaking truth to satanic behavior. And we don't have to fall out with each other to correct each other. We don't have to fall out with each other to correct each other. So now here Moses, he goes, and y'all know that story. He, he does everything God tells him to do, and they get across, and they leave, and they do whatever. And then when he tells them to speak to the rock, speak to the rock, speak to the rock, he smoked the rock. And Moses said, okay, God said, now I'm going to get you. Because you tried to rebuke me when I was going to wipe them out. Because they were so, such a pest and a burden. You know, if God gets sick of you keeping up mess, well, he want to wipe you out and he created you, why wouldn't we get sick of you keeping up mess? So the Bible says, now he tells him, you ain't going to the other side. But what y'all don't understand, that's all we ever preach. He didn't make it, he didn't make it. He never asked to go to the other side. So what does God do? That's why you can't write people off when they make a mistake. God says, listen, I love you so much until I'm going to do something that I ain't done. I'm going to bury you myself. And I'm not going to even give you a funeral. 
I'm going to hide you. But what I'm looking, I'm saying, okay, he got Elijah and he got Moses. So we write Moses off and then we find out that Jesus takes uh, Peter, James, and John to the mountain of the transfiguration. And then you find out that Moses and Elisha uh, wasn't, see, neither one of them had funerals. And God hit both of them. But now, see, people will write you off on your little mistakes. But now, here come the mountain of the transfiguration. And God has Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. <laughs> and Peter gets excited because God had just used him and he said, oh, I know who you are. And he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, oh, flesh and blood couldn't reveal that to you, but God revealed it to you. So Peter got anointed that night, but you got to know when the anointing is not on you and when to shut up. Peter jumps up and butt in God's meeting with Moses and Elijah. I could imagine Elijah telling uh, Moses, you think you're bad, but he sent a tornado after me. And I can imagine God telling, you think you're something. He buried me. He, he, he embalmed me. He was my mortician. He dressed me. And then he buried me. So Peter said, hey, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. That's why you got to know when to follow your leader. He said, we're going to build three monuments. So when God saw that he was butting in, he privatized the meeting and put a cloud on top of it. And when he got through talking to him, he lifted the cloud, and there was Jesus standing by himself. And God says, listen, you forget about Elijah and Moses. That was my meeting. You hear Jesus. You got to hear him. Well, I got to get out of here. Uh, I had open heart surgery, and I see myself getting excited. Let me close this out, and I want to leave this with the church. You are a historic church. And unfortunately, we have we lose our perspective sometimes and what this is about. This is not about ego tripping. When you're working for God, if you're sincere, you're going to have some problems. Mark 6, go home and read it. John the Baptist gets his head cut off. I don't, I don't care about nobody trying to cut my head off. If I am in the will of God, Mr. Clean say the safest place is in the will of God. I, 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 I was telling them, I was telling them today, me and my brother met up in the airport and we was changing planes. Well, then he introduced me to two big, robust, uh, 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 dressed up men. He said, Moses, this is my brother, this is my brother, and this is And when I got through shaking the hand, uh, they shook my hand hard. I'm a musician, so it really, it really let me know he shook my hand. <laughs> and he said, this is ahead of my security. I said, Okay. So when I got ready to leave across the gate, I was flying back to Memphis. He was flying to San Francisco when we was in Atlanta. I said, okay. I said, well, we got to go now. And his security looked at me like, who is we? But I had my security. But they couldn't see him. And he had assured me that he was going to fly home with my brother. He was waiting on me to land in Memphis, and he was waiting on me to get on the plane while he was standing there to walk me into the plane because he's everywhere at the same time. And not only does he hold the plane in his hand, but he controls the wind that the plane flies in. But do anybody know who my head of security is? He is not flesh and blood, but they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you know who the head of my security is, shout his name out right now. <laughs> look, 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 man, I'm telling you something. When, uh, uh, please don't do that again, because I got to get to this last line play my song. I got to get to my assignment, and I'm through with this. But boy, it's hard to call that name, and it don't do something to you. Uh, uh, I was flying home one time from London and, 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 and it was in the midnight and we ran into a storm 
and I was sitting in first class, and my hand went up, and the lady came over to me, and she said, Mr. Tyson, are, are you talking to me? I said, I'm talking, but I'm not talking to you. Uh, I'm talking to the man upstairs. Uh, have you ever been in something where you had to get off the phone and, and back things up? Or you riding in the car and you run into trouble and you don't want nobody to see you, so you kind of pull over and you have to talk to Jesus. Somebody say, talk to Jesus. Okay, okay, now let me, let me, let me through. I'm through. Y'all making me mess up. I'm through with this. I'm going to come back to the Lord and say the same, and I'm going to preach a sermon. This is not no sermon today. This is just an encouraging word for y'all. Because your church now, your church now is in transition. See, and whenever you go to transition, that always causes some friction sometimes. See, there's a song out there, if you love somebody, set them free. Yes, sir. Y'all understand that? If you love somebody, mm, Lord, you got to know how to set them free. Good God, I feel good today. Oh, Lord. Anybody feel good as I feel? Uh, so, so now, and I'm going to play a song, and I'm through. I'm a heart patient now, y'all. I, I can't overdo it. So now, Mark 6, John the Baptist's head is cut. Now Jesus decides to feed the 5,000. And he tells them, say, they say, one of them say, we can't feed all these people. It's always somebody in the crowd trying to block your blessing. <laughs> always somebody trying to block your blessing. Say, we can't feed them. But somebody said, it must have been a Kojic boy there. Because his mama fixed him a meal because y'all know we stay in church all day. Five loaves and two fish. Jesus, bless it. Feed the 5,000 men plus children and women. And then there's 12 baskets left over. See, whenever Jesus is in something, he's more than enough. Now, can you imagine you are with Jesus? See, I've been in great situations, Mother, where they celebrated me. Stellar Awards. Producers, uh, President Clinton. I can go down the line. You just Google me up. Went to Japan for the Hammond organ, all that. So I, it's easy for me to answer the call because they're celebrating me. Now, these same disciples, Jesus tells them to get into the boat. Hmm. I'm going to change your scenery and go to the other side. They don't have no problem following what he said. Because they just saw him feed the 5,000. But the Bible says that they ran into a storm. Yes, sir. Can I tell you something? You could be doing everything God tells you to do and still run into a storm. You hear me? But now what happens is the Bible says he's telling them to go to the other side because they're going to do more ministry. And they run into the storm, and they get so afraid because they can't see nothing. See, you're going to run into a storm because you're going to do a great work. That ain't on my prayer. God's willing, you're going to do a great work. And people like me ought to encourage people like you. Some of our generation ain't no use wasting time with us. Ain't no use wasting time with some of us. I had a lady stupid enough to tell me she don't want to talk to me no more because I had to tell a man, if you a bishop or you a pastor like me or whatever, we ought not be lying to people. I don't care about you not want to be my friend. Don't you know we got to correct each other? It's not going to be no positions when we die. When I was in the back of that ambulance gasping for breath, didn't nobody ask me, what's your title? Wasn't nobody in that ambulance with me but that attendant, God and the devil. The devil said, I'm going to kill you, and God said, I'm with you. 
do y'all understand? We got to realize that our souls are at stake. And there comes a time when you got to be like William Barr. You got to tell President Trump the truth. You ain't got to say it the way he said it, but you got to tell him the truth because we're hurting too many people. Let me close this out. Jesus is in the mountain praying, and they obeying him and running to a storm. And the storm was so bad until they couldn't see nothing. But the secret was they kept doing what he told them to do. They kept on rolling. I don't care what come your way. Don't you stop. And don't you get in battle with nobody. So you got to understand when, 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 when certain things happen on your street, the police comes and tell you, you just lock your door. And don't you come out. They got people that could deal with people like that. You stay focused on what God told you to do. And he'll take care of your adversaries. And don't be mad at your adversaries because they are the ones that's going to make you. Mother, I've been playing since I was a kid. They would tell me, oh, you can play, you can play, you can play. If I still get excited about that, I'd be a little retarded. It's my adversaries that have developed me. What makes me play? People say, you're showing off. No, I'm not showing off. I was telling mother I was in the limousine with Mother Mason. One going to even get in the car. The limousine driver, Fred Flagg, he's alive right now. Bishop Brandon Porter comes on TV. His daddy knew limousine. He fell asleep in the mouth of going to Virginia, the women's convention. Mother was there. I grabbed the wheel, bring us back up on the ravine. He slams on the brake. And I was telling you this. He slams on the brake, and the limousine goes in a tailspin. We was in the mouth. It was a guardrail in the freeway, not the whole freeway, maybe about these two pews together. And we going and we spin, spin, spin. Finally, we slam into the guardrail. I thought the miracle was we didn't get hurt. Mother Mason, we opened the back of the limousine door. Mother Mason was on the floor, and she said, Fred, you tried to kill me. <laughs> Our founder's wife, widow. I thought, mother, that the miracle was we didn't get hurt. That was a miracle. But it was a few years later that I was speaking in Colorado. And God showed me what the real miracle is. You know what he told me, sir? Long before you knew you was going to be coming down that road, God put it in the mind of the core engineers to put a guardrail right there. Because he knew that the devil was going to try to take you out. And you was going to have an appointment at greater pain. So, I put a guardrail right there. Can I tell you something? The devil can take you to the cliff. But he can't take you over the cliff. Because God's got a guardrail with your name on it. Let me close this out. Here's the last thing that happened in Mark 6. When they get in the storm, the storm is so bad. So now, this is for all of y'all that get all, when you can't see what's happening, just because you don't see him, don't mean he don't see you. And he'll let you toil, and he'll let you go through. So you, know, you don't want no easy road. You, want, you got a historical church. You, you, you got to welcome the battle. Because that's how you're going to show people who you serve. No, that, that's, that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to be an example. You welcome the battle. The, my battles, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have no battle with no deacon. If God's going to use me, give me the top man. Because, see, my brother was a CEO. The buck stopped with him. Do y'all understand that? So if I got a problem, I don't want to talk to the mid-level crony. I want to talk to the boss. And if the boss is silly enough to take me on, 
with my experiences in God, well, let's go. Because you're not going to have me up all night. I'm going to have you up all night. And I'm going to write you and sign my name so you'll know exactly what I'm saying. Let me tell you something. We got too many weak saints. We supposed to be victorious. Who wants to follow us? And every time you see us, we on a consecration because we got a problem. Put the devil on the consecration. Let me close. Man, I feel all right. <laughs> Jesus saw that they had enough. But the Bible says he looks out the fourth watch of the night. So he's, that's where the GPS started. Y'all think it started, it started with them because he looked out from the mountain and saw him in the storm through the sea, through the clouds. Then Jesus walked. And he didn't walk to them, y'all. A lot of people say he walked to them. No, he did not. He was walking to the other side because he knew they'd be all right because he told them to go. If he told you to go, you ain't got to worry about nothing. That's like y'all talking about Peter. Peter took his eyes off Jesus. Peter could take his eyes off Jesus because he knew that Jesus was responsible for him. <laughs> the Bible says that he would have passed them by. They were so scared. And then he decided they had enough. They were so scared, Mother said, they didn't even recognize Jesus. They thought it was a ghost. Don't never get so scared until Jesus is coming to you through somebody else. But if they don't have a clout position, a title, you're going to ignore them and keep listening to your little sorry friend. So Jesus says, and I'm through with this, he's had enough. But the secret is, Pastor, you got to keep rolling. When they talk about you, keep rolling. When they scandalize your name, keep rolling. When they try to threaten you, just keep rolling. Don't fight nobody. See, David didn't argue with nobody. God's going to send you people like he sent David in the Dugo. Did you hear what I said? People just waiting on somebody to show them that they have courage, that they're not scared to stand on the word of God. They waiting on somebody. Look, this church don't have a lot of mid-aged people, but I can see the time you're going to get it. But you're not going to get it if you're a scary cat. You're not going to get it if you preach personality. You're not going to get it if you preach cronyism. You're not going to get it if you fleece the saints and you let the saints be fleeced. You're not going to get it like that. You're going to get it by getting on your knees and ask God to show you why he called you to where you are. Can I leave this with you? Is there anybody sitting in here, you know you're here because your parents were sanctified. Not all of us, but some of us had some sanctified parents that prayed for us, that labored, and God is not going to let that labor be in vain. Well, let me play my song, but can I tell you something? I feel pretty good right here. Well, I, 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 I feel real good right now. Because you can't talk about Jesus and it don't do nothing to you. It, 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 it'll make your hands go up. When, 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 there's, when there's nothing happening, your hands will go up. You, uh, sometime I was in the airport Saturday and I thought about how sick I was, Mom. I was in the hospital with open heart surgery. I couldn't phantom getting back on the plane. I was so sick. But I was in the airport Saturday on my way here, and a pastor called me, and he started speaking in tongues. I said, Pastor, please don't do what you're doing, because you're going to make me run in this airport. And they're going to tackle me down because of security. I said, please don't keep speaking in tongues. Can I tell you something? There's going to come a time in your life when you think about how good God's been to you. You won't be ashamed to praise him. Yeah, anybody scared to praise him? Is anybody scared to praise him? I'll praise him wherever I go because I know who he is. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Can, 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 can I just say one thing before I play the organ? Yeah. I've already been to the water and I've already been baptized. I've already been converted. 
and I feel all right. Let me close with this. I stepped in the water, and the water was cold. Sometimes the church water is cold. It chilled my body, but it couldn't touch my soul. Because my soul, somebody shouted out my soul. Somebody shout out, my soul is anchored in the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Can I ask you a question? Won't the Lord make a way out of no way? If you're a witness, say yes. Won't the Lord open doors closed in your face? If you're a witness, say yes. Won't the Lord bring you out all right? If you're a witness, say yes. Well, let me, let me, let me play my song now. I feel all right, yeah, yeah. Can I tell y'all something? He's been good to me. Anybody know he's been good to you? Well, why don't you clap your hands and say hallelujah? He's been good to me. So good. I better stop now, y'all. <laughs> Listen, anybody need him? Can I play it again? <laughs> Boy, when I was laying in the hospital, all I could do is look up and tell him, God, I need you now. Anybody ever been there? In the midnight hour.
Somebody say, I come. Shout it out, I come. He's been so good. Come on, anybody know it? He's been so good. He's been so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's been so good. He's been so good. He's been so good. He made a way. Help me say, y'all. He made a way. He made a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. He made a way. No. He made a way. He made a way. Can I say one more thing? He brought me out. Help me say it, y'all. He brought me out. He brought me out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He brought me out. Yeah. Hey. He brought me out. He brought me out. He's been my friend. Anybody need him? He'll be my friend. He's been my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's been my friend. He's been my friend. He's been my friend. My soul says, yeah. Have this head, church. Yeah. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I don't know about you, but my soul say yeah. Shout it out, hallelujah. My soul say yeah.
Come on and tell him yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes. Yes in the morning. Yes in the noonday. Yes in the evening. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This is a yes, Lord, church. This just take me back to, back to, you know, my granddaddy be running revival. And, yes, Lord, so say yes, yes, Lord, so say yes, so say yes, so say yes, so say yes. This is what I want to do, and we're going to dismiss. Those that you just did. Those of you that need a touch, we going, we really going, but I got to do what the Holy Ghost tell me to do. I just want to touch you. I just want to touch you. Hey! Touch, I want you to come around here and just come praising him. That's it. Come praising him. Yeah, my Yeah, Yeah, Heal.
just praise him. Praise him. We got plenty of room. Come on, church, praise him. God, just praise him. Praise him in the dance. Praise him in the dance. Church of God in Christ. Tell him, yes. Yes. Oh, my Lord. Yes. 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 He made a way. trying to quit because I, I feel like having a fit. I feel like I, I feel the fire burning. I feel the fire burning. I feel the fire. Whoa. And Father, we thank you. Thank you for the move of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the truth that lies within this place. Thank you for your manservant. Thank you, God, for the time we have spent in your presence. And angels are ascending and descending. I see them in the spirit. I see if it calls kataba was kata brokoshia. Ah, and God cover you and keep you and bless you. Rebuke death, hurt, harm, and danger as you travel these streets, highways, and byways. May the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch, fight, and pray. Live holy every day. Amen. God bless you.